again, and welcome to another edition of Cooking with Fat. Uh, I'm Tommy Graziano, the owner of Charlie Stoney Point Cafe. This is my brother David. He's a Culinary Institute of America graduate, and this is Henry Reedy. He owns the Strawberry Street Vineyard. Uh, tonight we're going to be doing something pretty interesting. It's, uh, it's fall, but it's still sort of grilling season, so we're going to throw down some ribs. This is, these are called uh, Fat Daddy's Baby Back Ribs, and uh, David wants to start taking us through it. All right, what we're going to do is we have some uh, fairly lean baby back ribs. This is the equivalent of about of a whole rack. We're going to take a little cider vinegar. And meanwhile, our grill's heating up right now, so it's going to be nice and hot for us. You don't need to douse it in it. And then we're going to make a little dry rub real quick. What is a dry rub exactly? When they, they say rub, I don't rub it into it, but it's just something that incorporates certain flavors that you want into the flesh, so when you cook it, that those flavors are going to be more into the meat as opposed to putting a sauce on at the end. Okay. It cooks it into it. The first thing we have here is we have a little garlic salt, a little regular salt, a little celery salt, and a little sugar. A little more. Because we like salt and butter and all that stuff. Right here we have regular black pepper, have a little bit of uh, paprika, you can use Spanish or Hungarian, whichever you prefer. I prefer Hungarian. I, I can understand that. This is a little cayenne pepper. And this right here is a little uh, white pepper. If, if you don't know about white pepper, it's fairly... To me, it's hotter than uh, the black pepper. I'm just going to mix this up real quick. If you don't have these ingredients at your house, you can buy a pre-made one. Paul Perdome makes a good one. What we're going to do is take the ribs here. What he's doing now is flipping around a little bit just to get all the apple cider vinegar so it's soaking into the ribs a little bit before the rub on. Now, could you talk a little bit about the cut of the ribs, the baby back, as opposed to uh, some of the other type of ribs that are available? Well, the baby backs are just more tender because they don't get as much work. And then what's also what's popular is uh, spare ribs, St. Louis cut. That's just on the outside part of the, uh, of the hog if you're using pork ribs. These are pork baby back ribs. I don't know if there are pork beef baby back ribs. I mean, beef baby back ribs, I'm not sure. So you really lay those spices on thick there. Yeah, but what you want to do, just give it a little shake before you put it on the grill. That way, because if you don't, if you just cooked it right here, this is all going to clump up. And it's going to be a really, really strong spice. All right, while we're doing that, Henry, why don't you take us through our first uh, wine of the evening? I know wine went with ribs, but why wouldn't it? Well, why wouldn't Since it? Because it goes with everything else. Well, you know, this is a, a fun, good, hearty meal. And uh, so tonight we're doing a little Australian Shiraz. And uh, as you may or might, may not know, uh, Australia is um, making some of the finest red wines in the world. And uh, this is a nice, hearty, rich Shiraz, or Syrah, they call it in uh, the United States and France. Got a little spice to it, a little accent. Uh, the ribs very well. It's just a nice, hearty red. Uh, this is available at the shop for $12.99, and I believe that uh, Tommy's going to have it at the restaurant, too. Yes, indeed. Uh, um, now, one thing that we haven't done, I don't see why we wouldn't try this now. Let's uh, give it a little shot savor here. Savor it just a little bit. Man, mm. that's pretty dang good. Pretty good. Uh, we had, tonight is our first night uh, with a live audience um, sitting over to my left. We have some friends that are going to be eating. Uh, they're going to be trying the wines and the champagne that we're going to have a little bit later on. Uh, it should be a good time, I, I would hope. I hope they don't get too embarrassed. Um, the one in the middle is my mom, by the way, so um, now she's really embarrassed. So we wouldn't give them anything to uh, hurt them or anything, yeah. would we? Probably not. The ones on the I outside, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> right, one one other there? thing we're going to do here is we're going to make our own barbecue sauce. So what we did here, since it's cooking with fat, we just melted up some whole butter. And what we have here is just a little white onion. And I cut some scallions earlier. We're going to strain this off so you don't have to worry about having... You don't have to worry about having big chunks in there because it's going to be... We're going to strain it through a china cap. What I have in there now is celery, carrots, and onion. As this cooks, give it a little salt and pepper. You want to wait until the carrots start to get nice and soft. It's going to draw out a lot of flavor from these three. are real nice together. And then we're going to throw a little chopped garlic in. We're going to sweat that out for a little bit. So by sweating, you mean sautéing without adding any color to it. Is that right? Basically. You're drawing out wow. a lot of flavor. That's a pretty good one, Henry. Well, I saw that on another <laughs> TV show. 
Uh, that's too bad you mentioned somebody yeah. else. I know. Well, I didn't mention anybody. <laughs> if you notice. Now, what about these ribs while you're doing that? You ever flip them or? The best way to do these is on a nice slow fire. You can do it with a charcoal or you can do it with gas. And if you do it with gas, the best way to do it is to put the, uh, the ribs up on the top tier so they're not in direct contact with the heat. And, toward, and then at the end, you can kind of brown them up a little bit. Uh, if you have a charcoal grill, you can put them all the way to one side and just kind of smoke them. Have the, uh, actually have the ribs off the direct flame. And so, also, I think that'll keep it from uh, getting flare up on your grill too. Right, right, now, right there. But if you got a nice slow fire, you don't have to worry about it. Uh, don't ever contradict me again here, Dave. <laughs> now, keep in mind that this is a call-in show. It's uh, Blab TV, and the number is 353-1111. I'd be happy to answer any questions about the restaurant or about the uh, wine shop or about what we're cooking this evening or about the people on my left, any, other, any uh, questions you might have. It's 353-1111. Please give us a call. I'd be happy to talk to you. All right, this All has right. been going for a little bit. So now we're just going to add a little tomato product, just a rough chop of tomato. And this base right here, that's a, that's a great base for any kind of soup or sauce that you want to do. All these flavors work real nice together. And once we let this go for a little bit, will you hand me this? Yep. For this part here, a lot of people flavor, once they get it to this stage, you can flavor it basically any way you want. Some people use honey, some people use bourbon. You can use uh, basically whatever you want. You can use a, a Kansas City style barbecue sauce, which is um, a little bit sweeter as opposed to a Carolina sauce, which is a little bit more vinegar. And that's what this is right here. And the reason we're doing this, this is a good sauce by itself, but this right here, if you've got the time, it's just basically going to make it a little bit, it's going to make it that much better. A little red wine probably wouldn't hurt that either, would it? No, nah, probably not, Henry. Just put a little in there if you'd like to. <laughs> and you want to get this up to a nice, we can leave that there. Come up. I'm going right. to strain it back in there. This right here, you want to bring it to a boil first. And then we're going to cut it back to a simmer. And this is one of those things you can do while you're cooking your ribs. You can stick it on the side of the grill that's not so hot. And then like Henry likes to do, he likes to baste his ribs with a little bit of sauce. Just need to turn at the very the end, now wait till they're sort of done and then baste them at the very end. Um, all right, well, while we're doing this, Henry, why don't you tell us about some of the wine specials you have at the shop this weekend? Well, another wine that we're going to talk about tonight um, is going to be champagne, and uh, because we're doing a little dessert, and I thought champagne would go with it. Uh, we've got a great deal on Charles Elner, true French champagne, and I'll tell you a little bit about that later. Um, really fabulous, full-bodied champagne. Normally, it's uh, $45.99 a bottle. I know that sounds a little steep to some of you people out there, but it's absolutely fabulous. But uh, for this month only, $29.99, the savings of $15. Uh, it's a great bottle of champagne, and everybody here is going to get a chance to try it tonight. Uh, don't be too, I didn't bring that much, so y'all kind of go easy on me. Uh, but, uh, well, the, one of the things that uh, I guess you know and I know and David probably knows, but I bet you none of them know, what is the difference between champagne and, say, sparkling wine? Well, uh, all, all champagne is sparkling wine, uh, but only champagne from the Champagne region of France can be called uh, champagne. And uh, it's the northernmost growing region in, uh, in France and it's got nice cool temperatures and there's only three grapes uh, that are grown in Champagne and that's Chardonnay, uh, Pinot Noir, and Pinot Meunier. And uh, the Champagne from the Champagne region of France is known for its great acidity and great uh, complements food, really wonderful. It has those lovely tiny bubbles and uh, if you come on into the shop we'd be happy to show you. We carry over 20 different real French Champagnes as well as some great affordable uh, Champagnes from all over the world. Uh, thank you Sounds for that good. lesson, Henry. Uh, we're happy. I actually didn't know all that. Well, I knew okay. most of it. Well, we try to be educational <laughs> here on cooking with fat. Um, you haven't noticed a whole lot. I guess the butter, but what else as far as the fat content? What do they have? The, They're uh, fairly lean as far as baby backs go. Oh, why in the heck do we bring them in here? <laughs> They're good, Henry. <laughs> 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 They're good. Do you have a boil going on that yet? Yeah. What I can do is we have some already cooked up if we want to serve these. On guests here a little yeah, bit. Yeah, I, I don't see why we wouldn't. As see the magic of television. Yeah. All right. Come on, these things. Sure, please do. Let's strain this real quick. Boy, that smells great, Dave. Thank you, Henry. I'm going to strain the sauce real quick. I'm going to need you to get the beans for me. I am happy to please. do it. Except pan's going to be real hot, though. Be careful. Got you covered. All right. Um, while we're setting up these plates, we've got a call from Amy. If you guys would like to take that. 
Uh, if we'd like to take it. Amy, how are you doing tonight? I'm doing great. How are you doing, Tommy? Just peachy. By the way, I knew the basic answer to the sparkling wine Chardonnay question. I mean, I sparkling wine champagne question. I did not know all the grapes, but I did know about the champagne region of France. <laughs> that makes you a lot smarter than most people. Uh, well, I, I, a lot of people would argue with that. But um, speaking <laughs> of um, intelligence, um, since I have a CIA-trained chef in front of me here, I was wondering if there's a technical term for the, um, the celery, onion, uh, vegetable saute that Dave started the sauce with? The, the term for the two parts onion, one part celery, one part carrot, and that's called a mirepoix. Mirepoix. Now, when you add a tomato, how did that change that? That's just bringing some acid into it. It's going to help break down the uh, vegetables a little bit more. It's going to give you a little more flavor. And then you're straining all that out. And any fresh herbs go in there? No. Like the thing about with a, with a, maybe I'm thinking or anything? If you just... press, if you, if you wanted to push through is what you're talking about, mm -hmm. then you're going to get some of the uh, some of the, uh, the vegetables are going to get mashed in there as well. But you kind of just want kind of like a tomatoey kind of a... Yeah. It's just a smooth barbecue sauce. It's got a fair anything amount of vinegar in it. Anything in there for spice? I know you like things zesty. Well, actually, the sauce itself that I used, the, bar the particular barbecue sauce that I used, was, has a fair amount of spice and in it. And what was that? I think I missed that. The, actually, the brand name is Sours. Sours. Oh, yeah, I used that. Yeah. And you just doctored it up. Yep. And also, you have a lot of flavor coming off these ribs, as too. There's uh, four Keep kinds of bacon. pepper. I, mean, I got it. You know, three kinds of salt in the rub itself, so you're going to have a fair amount of uh, heat coming off of that. All right, well, they look great. Thank Excellent. you very much, great Amy. Job. Okay, bye. Take care. Do we want to go here to Brian? Sure. All right. Next call. Brian, what's going on? What's going on, guys? Well, I like to say I really like the show. Thank you, Brian. Simple recipes. Looks good. I love cooking with fat. All right. Good deal. <laughs> hey, on the baby back ribs, where are they? The pork ribs, right? Yes, sir. Well, where do they come? Where the name baby back ribs come from? From baby pigs, I guess. Maybe from baby pigs. I'm not sure. I have no idea. Okay. I'm not too quick on my feet. I can't make one up. <laughs> hey, on that wine, um, that Australian wine? Yeah. Is that Cabernet? Uh, no, the grape is actually called Shiraz. Um, uh, it, it, just as a little tidbit, Shiraz is the oldest cultivated grape varietal in the world, and it was probably Shiraz that was drank at the Last Supper. Um, but it's not Cabernet, it's a totally different grape, but it has a lot of the characteristics of uh, Cabernet. It's a big, full-bodied, uh, juicy, mouth-filling re uh, mouth red. So if you like Cabernet, you probably would like Shiraz. All right. I uh, appreciate it. Keep up the good work, guys. Thanks, Thanks Ryan. Bye. Appreciate it. All right. Uh, I guess what I've done now is we've plated up everything and went ahead and uh, served it uh, to our guests, and they're going to give it a shot and hopefully... Uh, get ribs and beans all over themselves and embarrass themselves and get dirty and all that. I'm not so. going to do that. All right. And uh, you guys go ahead and enjoy yourselves. And uh, when we come back from the break, which is just in a minute or so, uh, we'll ask you how you liked everything. And you better lie if you didn't like it, which I can't imagine what happened. All right. Okay. All right, as we're, yeah, that looks like we're about to take a break. Uh, thanks. Stick with us. Uh, stay with Cooking with Fat. We'll give a shot and hopefully uh, get ribs and beans all over themselves and embarrass themselves and get dirty and all that. I'm not so. going to do that. All right. Mm -hmm. And uh, you guys go ahead and enjoy yourselves. And uh, when we come back from the break, which is just in a minute or so, uh, we'll ask you how you liked everything. And you better lie if you didn't like it, which I can't imagine what happened. All right. Okay. All right, as we're, yeah, that looks like we're about to take a break. Uh, thanks. Stick with us. Uh, stay with Cooking with Fat. We'll be back in just a minute. We're going to make flower pots. That's right. We'll make flower pots. Drink champagne. champagne. 